Costello, and for the rest of the 80s, a rather more sober character ruled snooker. From London, the Plumstead potting phenomenon, Steve Davis. Davis didn't smoke, drink or gamble. He potted and he potted until he swept all before him, winning six world titles. Every sport would have loved to have had Steve Davis as the world champion. He dominated the 80s. He just sort of potted them all and he was kind of quite smug. Are you saying Steve? Yes, I am. I hated Steve Davis with a passion and, and my whole family did. <laughs> Any word you can describe for Davis was awesome. Today we've got Steve Davis here, who at 19 is London and home county's junior snooker king. Oh. Hi. I, I used to stutter all the time and I was very shy and introverted and I was the type of person I think that you'd have been pleased just for the school bully to beat me up. I play at a working men's club, obviously common working men's club, and I travel over to Romford where there are better facilities and um, better players to play against. The charisma bypass had taken early, you know, he was, he was very shy. But you could see straight away that he was a player. The moment I got a snooker cue in my hand, I changed. Amazing. As a player, you couldn't ask for anyone better. The ability to practice for hours. Now, other people at that time were not paying that price. Oh, no! Yes. <laughs> Barry Hearn became Steve's manager, but they were more like family. I think we developed a, like a, not a father and son, but a big brother, younger brother relationship. Before Davis, snooker player's idea of training was a session at the local Burnley Inn, followed by a workout with the barmaid. Those days, there was a couple of tournaments. After a, most of it was exhibition work. When you finish, go out and have a meal, go to a nightclub, have a few drinks, you know. He came along, took us all by surprise. Didn't drink, didn't go to nightclubs and went to bed early. For years, thought somebody built him in a garage. Do you know what I mean? I was waiting for the scandal to break out that, that he'd been made from tractor bits. The Romford robot reached his first major final in 1980. He was for real. Steve Davis is about to don the crown of UK champion. We're all going, hi, hi, who's this? What's happening here? I'm sure as the years go by, you will see him, as I hope to, wear the world crown. Davis had paid his dues, he had his apprenticeship, but 1981, the final, was when all of that crystallised into achieving our goals. Only Burley ex-miner Doug Mountjoy stood between 23-year-old Davis and his first world title. They always said in those days that you can't win the World Snooker Championships until you're 40, because you're not mature enough, and we bucked the whole system. There's now 22 points on the table, and as you see, this difference in the score is 22 points. Watching those last few balls go down against Doug Mountjoy, and talking to yourself saying, now don't do anything silly, just sit here calmly and enjoy the moment. And the moment I popped the, potted the last couple of balls. And that's it, the world snooker champion, Steve Davis. I remember looking up to the sky. The relief when it's over is astonishing. It's not the winning or the losing, but I felt the tears welling up because it was just finished. I think I'd probably cried if I'd have lost. It wouldn't have made any difference. The next thing I knew, I was on the stage hugging him. The steam train hit me. It was probably his first thought knowing Steve was, oh God, what's Barry doing now? I think I gave him a body check that would have knocked out most second row forwards. He was going like that in front of the television cameras. The camera couldn't get anywhere near me. It was marvellous. The feeling of actually achieving it when you've set your targets over so many years, you, know, you just can't describe the words that that was. It was an I told you so, you know, you, we were going to be the best. He was everything I didn't want to be in any walk of life, which is really sad in a way because you're going, what a winner. <laughs> you get this terrible quote in Snooker about a misspent youth. And the only person that's never said it to me is Steve's bank manager. He loves it. He thinks the best spent youth you could ever have. I became a winning machine during the 80s. He dominated snooker. 
and Steve's favourite phrase would always, you know, I want to get his brains in a jam jar and put them on my mantelpiece. Well, it became the, um, the biggest name in the sport, didn't he? It's as simple as that. You know, every time you turn the television on, who was standing there holding the cups in the air? It was Steve Davis. I just putted the balls and kept my head down, and Barry did the business on talking me up and creating uh, you know, the image off the table and selling me as a, a commodity. The good manager. Hello, Barry Hearn. Also known in the business as Barry Earn. Yes, well, if you're talking about, no, if you're talking about an afternoon and evening, yeah, I'd do, if we were in your area, we'd do 12.50 for the night time. It wasn't really me that developed Steve Davis, it was the, the real Davis emerged. Have a come on, Steve, you understand, we all need somebody to clean on. We were on every show. Hey, can I have your autograph? Yeah, sure. <laughs> can I have yours? Oh, you'll have to get to the back of the queue. <laughs> he just didn't seem to ooze any character whatsoever. The end result was that Spitty Image came along and, uh, and did a puppet on the strength of that. I don't think Steve Davis's persona would be as big without the Spitting Image cartoon. Jimmy's got a name, Whirlwind. Alex has got a name, Hurricane. Why haven't I? All right, we'll call you uh, Very Good. As that? Steve Very Good Davis. We just collapsed. I think we learnt the script off by heart so we could do it to order. Steve, extremely professional indeed, Davis. That's a good one. No, it's not. It's boring. As soon as the spitting image puppet came along, that was it. You only thought of the spitting image puppet and not of the real guy. I don't want to be boring. I want to be flamboyant, different, exciting. All right, all right, all right, Steve. People started coming up and saying, Steve, you're not boring. You are, you know, don't take any notice. I go, yes, I am. I've got it. Interesting Davis. A nickname is a nickname, and I have one, and I've made you proud, Father. I'm Steve Interesting Davis. And it's stuck all these years. Steve Interesting Davis?